Hi, I'm Jonah, the current Chair of Council for the Students' Union at Bradford. Thank you everyone for coming today. I hope you'll enjoy the next hour and a half or so, and I hope that the questions posed are informative and can help you make your decision on the 6th of May. Some housekeeping. Each candidate will have three minutes for an introductory speech, after which we will move on to some submitted questions. During this time, everyone watching is encouraged to send in their own questions through the Q&A box, and we will pose these to the candidates later on. Now we'll hand over to our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Shirley Congdon, who will give a quick rundown of the West Yorkshire Mayor role and its responsibilities. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this non-selective hustings for the West Yorkshire Mayor, hosted by the University of Bradford Students' Union. My name is Shirley Condon, as Jonah said, and I'm the Vice-Chancellor here at the University of Bradford. I'm absolutely delighted that five of the seven candidates participating in the hustings organised by the Students' Union are here joining us. Before I go any further, it's important that I point out that the views and opinions and values represented this evening are those of the candidates and not those of the University of Bradford. So on Thursday, May the 6th, residents of West Yorkshire will vote to elect their first mayor. The mayor is the elected leader of the combined authority, a collection of local authorities that make up West Yorkshire. Bradford, Calderdale, Kirklees, Leeds and Wakefield. The election of the mayor is a key part of the West Yorkshire devolution deal, which sees the power to make decisions currently made by central government transferred to our local region. The deal sets out the new powers, funding and the responsibilities which will be transferred from central government to West Yorkshire. It enables the five councils and the mayoral combined authority to take more decisions that affect the issues locally local communities, and these include transport, adult education, skills, jobs, infrastructure, housing, regeneration, and importantly, the region's economic recovery. The devolution deal represents significant public investment in our region, bringing more than 1.8 billion for West Yorkshire into local control. This includes 38 million per year for 30 years to spend on local priorities, the mayor and the local council leaders will decide how this will be spent. In consultation with the people of West Yorkshire, this therefore is an important moment for the city and the region, as the people of West Yorkshire will gain more control over spending and have a greater say in the decisions that affect them. The university plays a major role in the city of Bradford and West Yorkshire as a driver of social inclusion and economic mobility. The applied research that improves the lives of people are really important. The majority of our students and staff live in Bradford and the wider West Yorkshire region, and they will see the impact of the decisions made by the mayor. Ultimately, the mayor will have responsibility for significant funding decisions, which can and will improve our city, providing better facilities for our students and, the, and generating more employment opportunities for graduates. The West Yorkshire mayoral election gives students, staff and members of the local community the chance for the first time to elect someone who will bring together the combined strengths of West Yorkshire to represent their interests, drive projects that will benefit local communities and ensure that their voices are heard. Our university is a fine tradition of organising hustings and I am so proud that our students' union is taking a leading role in contributing to local political debate and discussion. We are also delighted to welcome students from other West Yorkshire universities to the hustings tonight. So we, before we hear from our candidates, I'm just going to turn back now to Jonas Smitch, chair of our Students' Union Council, who is chairing the hustings this evening. And finally, just to remind everybody that these hustings are not intended to influence voters, but they are a fine opportunity to hear firsthand the views and priorities of each candidate. Over to you, Jonah. Thank you, Shirley. And with that, can I now please invite Tracy Braben for her opening speech. 
Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to the hostings. I was only on uh, campus yesterday um, visiting Bradford College and looking very admiringly at uh, Bradford University. And I just know that there's great work being done there, uh, fantastic tutors and great um, students who have had, uh, to be frank, quite a rubbish year. So I'm looking forward to the questions and looking forward to having a, a proper conversation with the people on this Zoom. So. My pleasure to be here and a privilege to be standing as West Yorkshire's first ever Metro Mayor. And if I'm elected, I will be the first ever woman Metro Mayor in the country. Um, West Yorkshire's a great and individual part of the world. Like other regions in the North, it's varied and particularly in terms of its people. We have post-industrial urban areas, cheek by jowl with rural, semi-rural towns and villages, and many parts of the region have high levels of ethnic diversity. We've got fantastic universities, not just Bradford, Leeds and Huddersfield, colleges in Wakefield, and national reputations and attracting students students from all over the country and the rest of the world. All of this makes West Yorkshire an exciting place to be and I have great plans to build on our strengths and address some of the problems we all know we have. COVID hit us hard after a decade of Tory austerity and much longer period of underinvestment and our people have been seriously undervalued and underestimated. And this last year has been so hard for so many. Uh, people have lost loved ones, lost their jobs, some have lost their homes, and I know thousands of students in our region have had it really tough. Obviously, our fingers are crossed that we're getting through this pandemic and there's light at the end of the tunnel, but we don't really fully impact, it, uh, understand its true impact. If elected, my priority will be to lead a fair and just and inclusive recovery. And as part of this, I'll establish a mayor's youth employment scheme, including a kickstart green gateway to help create a thousand jobs for young people and provide a mix of employment opportunities. I prioritise skills and training to ensure everyone in West Yorkshire has everything they need to secure work. I'll also establish a creative new deal to ensure our creative industries are part of our broader recovery strategy and appoint an inclusivity champion to work to ensure the region's recovery benefits us all. I know that the climate uh, change emergency is real and I'll use my powers to tackle it urgently, promoting greener transport, building affordable and sustainable homes and working to accelerate investment in hard flood defences and natural flood management. Uh, I, if I become that Thank you. If I become mayor, I'll take on the role of the Police and Crime Commission, and we'll hopefully speak about that in further detail. But I'll recruit 750 more frontline police officers and staff to keep women and girls safe and at the heart of my policing plan. Thank you very much for that, Tracy. And next up, can I please invite Bob Buxton for his opening remarks? Thank you. So first of all, how have we got here? Well, the Tories have ignored local opinion and given us a weak devolution deal. £38 million is less than £16 per person per year. There are no powers on health, the seminal issue of the day. There are no powers on children's education, which is seriously underfunded throughout Yorkshire. Nevertheless, what you want to know from me is what will I do with limited powers and funding? Set a good example of what devolution can achieve and hopefully persuade politicians to give us more power in the future. So I come straight from work today and in my work clothes, and I teach engineering apprentices in Bradford. I've got a PhD in engineering, I've got experience in transport, including traffic flow modelling, I've got experience in writing a foundation degree in renewable energies. So I've got a CV which is relevant to the powers which the mayor does have. Now the mayor has powers to write basically a local transport plan, but not the funding to deliver it. So whoever wins, they'll say what they want to do on transport, and if it's a mass transit system, they'll have to go cap in hand to Westminster to persuade them to release the funds. And this is to a government that's, that's uh, downgraded massively Bradford's new um, city centre station, Allegheny HS2, whatever you think HS2, it's not going to come to Yorkshire, and also cancel Sheffield to Manchester, a new road. So what will I do? I'll make the business case for a mass transit system for the whole of West Yorkshire so overwhelmingly good that it will cost them Westminster seats if they don't approve it. Also improve bus services, which we'll come on to later on in transport. Um, I fought for seven years to protect a green belt all across West Yorkshire, 
Uh, Labour councils always target the green belt. They're still doing it. Um, sports pitches, uh, nature reserves, floodplains, they know no limits. Unfortunately, the Tories change in national policy, the planning for the future, make it much more difficult to defeat these uh, housing plans and protect the green belt. I'll do everything in my powers, although the powers on planning are being delayed by the government thanks to a last minute decision. Now, my experience in adult education includes writing courses, not just uh, green energy, but also engineering, pre university course, um, units on health science, and that sort of thing. I want to give people new opportunities, opportunities for all. What I mean by that is that no one will be underqualified to start the new training, even pre GCSE levels. No one will be overqualified. If you've got a degree, if you've got a PhD, you'll still be able to retrain in different areas to have different opportunities. If I want to build a mass transit system, if I want to improve um, homes, make them greener, I want the workforce to be educated within West Yorkshire. That will give everyone the chance of a new start. In terms of police, I don't have experience in that, so I will appoint as my deputy for police and crime a criminologist called uh, Dan Woodlock, who's also got experience with the British Transport Police. Now, if you vote for a politician, you'll get politics. If you vote for an engineer, you'll get results. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Bob Buxton. And next up, can I please invite Andrew Cooper from the Green Party to speak? Um, I'm Andrew Cooper. I'm a Green Party councillor in Kirklees, uh, Huddersfield. And uh, I've been a councillor for 22 years. So I've been elected as a Green Party councillor and re-elected six times. And uh, that's sometimes that's been a bit tough because people have been... Uh, quite keen to unseat me on occasions, but uh, managed to stay on. So I must be doing something right, I guess. Um, uh, one of the key areas that I've, I've focused on in my time as a councillor is dealing with the climate crisis. And uh, on, the, on Kirklees, I was responsible for the first ever uh, free insulation scheme, which resulted in over 50,000 homes uh, being insulated free of charge. And that put thousands of pounds back in the local economy uh, reduce carbon emissions and address fuel poverty. Uh, and so it's something that uh, I would like to emulate and do more of at a bigger level across West Yorkshire. Also during that time, uh, I was responsible for uh, bringing in the UK's first ever um, no upfront cost scheme for installing solar panels. Uh, and that won national awards as a, as a policy innovator. So really, I'm all about ideas and trying to find pathways to actually get us to use those levers of, levers of power to, uh, to move things forward. So I've, under this role, I'd like to establish a green building fund to ensure that all new public buildings and social housing projects are built to the highest possible energy efficiency standards, which, are, uh, which will be 90% uh, improvements on existing standards. Uh, for students, I, I represent uh, the University of Huddersfield area, there are a lot of student halls, so I'm very aware of student needs uh, and um, I represent thousands of students uh, across Huddersfield. So please vote for me as your first preference in the uh, mayoral elections. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew Cooper. And next up, can we please have Matthew Robinson from Conservative? To keep to time, Jonah, I'll try and make sure I hit the bullet points on this. So that means it means no new local taxes. It means no congestion charge for the region. It means not building on our greenfield sites. It means bringing brownfield sites forward first so that we can regenerate communities, investing in helping our high streets, making sure that they are places people want to be, want to experience. It means making sure that what we do is we deliver shared ownership houses, we deliver green houses. So we're using the latest green technology on insulation and energy generation to make sure our homes are taking account of the climate emergency. It involves building and planting a new northern forest across our region, making sure that we have the canopy cover, the tree cover, and we're building habitats cleaning up our rivers, making sure that the work that's been done on the, the wharf, the air and the colder actually is seen and felt across the whole of our region. And it means making sure we have more police with the extra powers and better equipment we need to keep our streets safe for all. And that means we should be tackling drug crime, antisocial behaviour, knife crime, gang crime on our streets and making sure that our police are working with communities. That's what I want to deliver. That's what I'll do as mayor. And I'll give you some time back, Jonah. Thank you. So, Stuart Goulton from the Liberal Democrats, please. Thanks, Jonah. Um, and, and thank you to everybody who's uh, tuned in today to listen to the different candidates. Um, in terms of the Liberal Democrats, 
uh, and our vision for West Yorkshire with me as as electoral uh, the the electoral opportunity you have to have Limited of Capital leadership in the area. Uh, here are my priorities. Uh, our experience of COVID on top of the climate change emergency calls for a complete refocus around the areas of transport, housing and economic development, uh, as well as adult education. Uh, and this is the area that the mayor has responsibility for. I'll use my 20 years experience in local government to work with councillors and communities to develop 15 minute neighbourhoods to revive our town, district and village centres and harness the potential of home working to rebalance the economic growth in our region. This should also include a cultural hub on every high street. I will end public transport spending that allows private bus companies to increase their profits whilst doing little to address reliability and rising prices for passengers. Let's get more investment in local bus routes and safer walking and cycling in our neighbourhoods instead of the obsession with city centre prestige projects. HS2 is an overpriced white elephant, and I will not accept that our region should wait for the delivery of HS2 before we can benefit from better rail services. And I will work to get more carriages and greater frequency on our routes and deliver the trans-Pennine connectivity that we deserve through the Northern Powerhouse Rail, which hopefully will deliver a city centre station for Bradford. If we're to tackle the climate change emergency, we need to grow green jobs for the future. And the West Yorkshire rural economy has been overlooked for too long. Let's get more of our food grown locally, help farmers generate more renewable energy and increase our tree cover and develop local leisure tourism. Let's get more zero carbon housing built by local building companies developing homes that people can afford. We need to encourage new jobs outside of city centre offices and warehouse parks. The care of our vulnerable and elderly cannot be left to big corporate players, and I hope to develop a quantum growth in small and micro enterprises in community care in West Yorkshire. Adult education will be a key influence on our local economic performance, emerging from a COVID recession, which has been exacerbated by Brexit. I will endeavour that local education providers will, will be prepared for the retraining of adults without work, and that capacity is increased to deliver qualifications in green growth, um, areas like arboriculture, renewable energy and construction. I will also work with councils to develop a scheme to maximise the confidence of parents with, who've been let down by the school education system in the past and now have issues around numeracy and literacy. Um, and I'll make sure that they are able to get the learning that they need to help the children that they have to thrive in the future. This relates directly to my priorities on crime and policing that also fall into the jurisdiction of an elected mayor. My overriding priority will be to forward looking and try and insulate as many young people as possible in our region from being sucked into the criminal justice system in the first place. As mentioned above, I will work with local authorities to support young people to achieve at school as children with more qualifications have more options. A support right. I'm sorry there, Stuart, that is your time up. We will be trying to keep to the times quite concisely. Thank you for those remarks. Uh, thank you to all the candidates for their opening remarks. I want to remind the audience to post any of their own questions in the Q&A box so we can ask those later on. To get us started, we will go to some questions from our students. And first up, we will have Inshal Ahmed, please. Thank you for that, Jonah. So being lived in student halls for a while now, my question to you is this pandemic has revealed a lot of serious issues with private sector student accommodation contracts, which like other private rental sectors have no flexibility and in vast majority of cases favor the landlord over the tenants, that is the students. What are the candidates views on safe, affordable and fair rented accommodation, particularly for students? Thank you for that question, Inshal. Um, answering that question first, can we please have Bob? So, um, first of all, students are ripped off left, right and centre. That's with tuition fees. The fact they've had to pay full fees in during the pandemic, but they haven't got very much. And also with rents, there's been no sort of compensation. Other people have been looked after by the state, if you like, through furlough. So as students, you'll be paying the tax in future years to pay for all that support that various people have had. You just didn't get the support in the first place. Now, the mayor has very limited 
powers, round up is sort of um, voluntary code for landlords to sign up to. A one deal, I think students could be given. If you stay at the same place for two years, you should get a rent freeze. I mean, I mean that in cash terms. Landlord saves money for so not having to change over the tenancy, so you should get your piece of that. We have to look at the rents charge in university accommodation. Again, I have to use soft power to try and work with universities. Um, but the rise in rental costs has been driven partly by universities themselves or companies working with universities in university accommodation. And it is just far too much. And, um, you know, when I went to university, I went in 1997, no fees, two grand a year grant, and uh, one year I paid £35 a week, even account for inflation. You can see that people have been completely ripped off. I'm sorry the mayor doesn't have more powers on this, but I'll certainly try to establish a voluntary code and do whatever I can with soft power. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. And uh, next up, we will go to Andrew Cooper, please. Uh, so uh, the Green Party believes that uh, a short, short old tenancies uh, that a lot of students end up uh, being involved with should be replaced with a stable rent tenancy. And the principle should be that, uh, that the, uh, the house is the home of the tenant first and an asset of the landlord second. And so security of tenure is at the heart of, uh, of our policy on, on private renting. Uh, and so uh, we ought to abolish no fault evictions uh, for, as a power of landlords and that uh, if good tenants uh, are in properties and that they're not um, causing any difficulties or anything, that uh, they should remain in the property. And uh, the landlord may only end the tenancy uh, in order to sell the property um, so that uh, really there's going to be more time for people to remain within a stable, uh, within a stable property. We also believe that rents should be no more than 35% of the median take-home pay, or in this case, a student room. For those comments. Uh, next up, can we please have Matthew Robinson? It's an interesting question, Jerry, because this has been suggested by Bob, actually. The mayor has very limited powers in, in this regard, and it's more the soft power to bring our universities together um, with our vice chancellors, with our student unions, and having that voice and that feedback loop that's there so we know what's going on. It's been a mixed picture. Um, there have been some landlords that have been excellent through this and really sought to help. And there are other landlords that have been abysmal. Um, so I don't want to castigate all landlords in this. I think there have been some that have been brilliant. I'm amazed that there hasn't been some sort of, you know, rating the accommodation app that's come through to, <laughs> to make sure that people know just what's being delivered and where there's value for money. I think that's what we need to do. We need to be proactive and looking at who the good landlords are, working with them, championing them and saying, actually, we need the others to step up and holding their feet to the fire on this a little. Matthew. And next up, can we please get Stuart Galton? I'm muting. There you um, are. Yeah, to, to follow the, the line of uh, argument from, from the other candidates, we don't have any formal powers around student housing, but there is that power of convening uh, those people that you need to get together to, to get some kind of proper policy in place. I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about uh, Matthew Robinson's idea that you can make it a voluntary scheme because we've had plenty voluntary schemes in the past and you need to have an, an element of enforcement to enable standards to rise because there will always be landlords that wish to be uh, unscrupulous compared to some of the more responsible um, competitors that they have in the field. So I would like to see the mayor uh, convene um, a, a meeting of the different local authorities to look at how we can actually uh, universalise our licensing system across West Yorkshire to ensure that we have some decent standards for private student housing. Thank you very much, Stuart. And last on this question, we have Tracy Braven, please. Thanks so much. And honestly, it's been a really tough year that so many young people have not been living in accommodation and still they're having to pay for it, or they've been living in accommodation and felt that they're um, locked in and can't, you know, socialise. New students at university not being able to make French, and that's the whole experience, isn't it, of university? And I certainly know those on um, 
on uh, courses that are that need physical uh, interaction. So the conservatoires, music, dance, um, ke chemistry, medicine, you know, having to, to learn online is not satisfactory. I know that part of the problem as well is not just uh, bad landlords, and there are many of those around because we have a broken housing system. It's also, I would suggest, the agencies, that are the intermediaries, and the costs for signing contracts, the costs for cleaning, the costs for um, um, cl uh, clearing stuff. I do feel that there are people in between the landlord and the student that are also making a fortune at the expense of the student. Now, I was the first in my family to go to university. I, I went for um, uh, very little money. It is deeply unfair that in order to be educated, you're paying through the nose. Sorry, that is time for you there, Tracy. Thank you very much for that. And we have our next question, which will be posed by Anila Ashraf, please. Thank you, Jonah. Um, we all know that crime and uh, harassment against students and young people are big issues in our towns. And as a student, I'm aware that students and universities contribute significantly to the local economy. Now, what would the candidate expect the local authority to do in order to improve safety and social integration? And also, what would you do to have more students on board? Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. And can we go to Andrew Cooper, please, to answer that question first? Yeah, sure. Uh, and I think street lighting is is particularly important um, during during this time. Uh, councils have been uh, looking at to reducing the amount of street lighting and not putting new street lights in. I, I actually think that we ought to be uh, having lower energy street lights. We're getting a lot more LED street lights uh, that make it safer at night to people to to walk. But also, we have low energy at the same time. I think we've also got to recognise that a lot of our towns and cities are 24-hour economies, and that does mean that safety uh, late at night is, is particularly important. Uh, and so street angels, uh, policing, those sort, of, uh, those sort of facilities need a lot of support. So quality environments there uh, are important. So in terms of making the, the, the places themselves attractive to, us, to students, I want to make town centres um, places which people enjoy going to, destinations. And thank you, Andrew. That is time again, sorry. Um, thank you for that answer. Can we please next up have Matthew Robinson? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's fair to say that our universities, but our students as well, contribute a huge amount to life across West Yorkshire. Uh, and we talk about universities as an all-encompassing term, but I think we don't talk about students enough and what they're delivering. And often they've stepped up and stepped in through COVID. Um, there needs to be far more interaction with the police and local authorities about just what's going on on campus, but what's going on for universities uh, and university students across the city. I was really heartened to hear what Shirley was saying just before we came in about Bradford University being the university for and of Bradford. And I think that's what all our universities should be thinking. They are for the city and they are of the city, how they can play a crucial part in that. Uh, and I would love to see more. I've talked about the Yorkshire Uni boards coming together and having a say with the mayor. I think maybe the student union boards need to come and have regular meetings with the mayor as well. Thank you for that, Matthew. Um, and next up, can we please have Stuart Galton? Yeah, thanks, Janet. That was a really good question from Amila. And it, this is where I think neighbourhood policing comes in because uh, each neighbourhood should have a policing plan that, that suits um, the people that are in that area and also the geographical uh, circumstances of that area. Too often when it comes to student um, crime, uh, reporting they they focus on things like burglaries uh, which happen during the daytime generally and then ignore that at night time students feel very vulnerable and can sometimes be targeted by people coming from outside of student areas specifically because they know that a lot of young people are vulnerable and they can be subject to street attack we need to make sure that neighborhood policing is for nighttime as well as daytime uh, and, and the, you know, we, you, you don't get the, the police switching off at, after 10, 8, 10 p.m. at night. Uh, and that should hopefully be coordinated with what universities are delivering on campus so that that fits in with the uh, safety which is being offered off campus. Thank you very much for that, Stuart. And can I please invite Tracy Braben next? 
Thanks, really great question. We need to police by consent. I'll be committed to, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, 750 more officers and staff because we do need more police available to respond to crime. But fundamentally, it's about safety, isn't it? So I will be committed to developing a comprehensive violence against women and girls strategy. Um, I'll be making sure that we have a, a night czar that will uh, not just look after clubs and venues and the night economy, but making sure that we have strategies in place to protect night workers, whether that's cleaners or whether that's students coming back from working in bars, whether that's NHS workers, to make sure that there's a, a safe economy for them. Um, for example, after work, where do you go and get something to eat that's not too expensive and that is healthy and that you could feel safe going to that venue um, to, to get that food? So there's lots we can do about the night economy. But it's really important to listen as well to young people. So I'll have a youth council and I will Thank be you, really friendly to young people. Unfortunately, that's your minute up. And uh, last on that question, can we please get Bob Buxton? Yeah, so it's all very well Labour saying they'll put um, women and children's um, safety at the heart of their manifesto. But actually it's Labour that keeps the Holbeck red light zone going. And we've got children being propositioned on their way to school and local women propositioned all the time. And that's the biggest threat to women and girls' safety, and it's a pilot scheme. So you may not live in Holbeck, but if they don't admit it's a failure, there'll be another one somewhere else. So let's stop that. I agree with Andrew on street lighting, LEDs, absolutely. We need better street lighting. Uh, policing, uh, Labour councils are cutting um, PSOs. Uh, we need more frontline police and not fewer. And how else do we sort of prevent this sort of harassment? I was a victim of a hate crime recently, very uh, threatening words shouted at me by a very young man. And I'd use soft power to go into schools. There are no actual powers on children's education, only adult education, which is another frustration of mine. Nevertheless, I would be an ambassador for those sorts of things in schools. Thank you. Thank you very much to uh, um, Bob Buxton for those answers. And thank you to all the candidates for answering that question. And our third question will be asked by Elena Kaha, please. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, so I'm the environmental and ethics officer in the student union right now. And my question would be, how would the candidate improve an environmental impact of transport in our cities and towns? Thank you very much for that question, Alina. Uh, first up, can we please have Matthew Robinson? Yeah. So it's a great question, Alina, and, and one that I think people are asking all across the region, actually. What we need is to make sure we have transport that's clean, green and on time. We need to make sure it's transport that people can rely on so that they make the conscious decision to, to take those alternatives and get out of their car. And a congestion charge won't do that. It, um, it won't help people. Actually, it will hit the lowest earners hardest. And that's not what we should be aiming to do. We need to look at more demand-led transport models and a mass transit system that connects up all of West Yorkshire. And it is about connecting all of our region. It's about our towns that have been forgotten about, making sure that they can access opportunities in our cities uh, all, all across the region. Uh, and that is how we will drive forward innovation. It's how we will encourage business. And it's how we will make sure that we deliver jobs and access to jobs too. Thank you very much, Matthew, for that answer. Can we next please go to Stuart Galton? Uh, yeah, thanks, Jonah. Um, I think that the, the best thing that we can do is try and ensure that people don't need to travel uh, unnecessarily. One of the great lessons of COVID is that um, the, co the congested commute into the centre of Leeds or Bradford is something that people were able to leave behind for a while and do a little bit more homework. In. If we can encourage and enable more of that to happen, then there will be less journeys made by polluting vehicles. Uh, so alongside that, we also need to be generating those 15 minute neighborhoods so that people can be enabled to walk and to cycle within their community to get to the shops or go to the doctors or whatever. Um, and also every ward, if I'm there, will have their own transport plan so that they can say how all this could be achieved. And then when the West Yorkshire Combined Authority does bigger transport schemes, they can incorporate the aspirations of those communities in those plans. Thank you very much for the answer, Stuart Galton. And next up, can we please have Tracy Braben? Tracy, unfortunately, you are muted on your microphone. 
Bosses, 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 really important to bring those back into public control. And also following the move by West Yorkshire Combined Authority to introduce a 60p single flat fare for 16 to 19 year olds. That's the, exactly the right direction of travel, if you pardon the pun, uh, to make sure that younger people um, make the most of buses. Um, obviously we need electric charging points, um, building green buses, but we need to connect the transport up. It's no point just having a good bus service if it doesn't connect to your railway. I'm a, a keen cyclist, so more cycling, including bike rental schemes. We've seen them work really well in London for electric bikes in particular so that they're inclusive so everyone can enjoy cycling across the region. Thank you for the answer, Tracy. And can we please next have Bob Buxton? Thank you. So we do indeed need a mass transit system. That's my number one priority if I'm elected. I'll use my experience in entering a transport doing I can to make that happen. On buses, we need to build towards a franchise model with smarter, fairer tap and pay. So different uh, companies can bid to be part of the franchise, but they have to fly under the same flag so you don't get ripped off for using different bus companies as we do at present. Uh, the mayor doesn't have those same sorts of powers on train companies. I can only use soft powers to try and negotiate what I can. Also allow bus passes to be used 24-7, as they already are in London. So why not in West Yorkshire? A uh, minute is not enough time to go through all of these. So um, I'll just have a few congestion charges. It's not fair to have that until you've got the proper public transport option. It hits the poorest hardest. I'm sorry, I will not support that. Uh, biofuels divide opinion. We need more research. There are limiting factors in terms of land uh, availability. There are loads of different types of biofuels and uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, USA leading the way on that. Uh, why aren't we? We need to research in that because biofuels have absolutely massive potential for us. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect timing from you there. Thank you very much. And last on this question, can we please get Andrew Cooper? So pedestrians, 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 because ultimately everybody is a pedestrian. Uh, and so putting them at the top of the hierarchy uh, of transport is so important. And so making sure that pedestrians can get in and out of town centres without having to cross roads, without with road bridges, um, subways, things like that, making sure that people are able to get around, making sure there's more pedestrianisation in our town centres. So, so to have those quality environments that where people feel safe, they don't have to cross roads, they don't have to get involved with traffic too much, making that that, that is really top of the list. Safe cycle lanes. Uh, not a not a painted line in the road, but but uh, cycle lanes which are protected, which enable people to go in and out of town centres with, without having to come into conflict with, with traffic. So yes, we need buses, and buses are important, but they're not the only thing uh, in, in terms of transport. Yes, we do need them to be cheaper. We need them to be cleaner. We need them to be able to access town centres. Thank there. you yes, very much, Andrew. That is your minute down there. <sighs> <laughs> I know it's quite short, um, uh, but that way we get through a bit more topics and we get to hear all your views and opinions. Next up, can we please have Victoria Linkwich to ask our last question of this part? Thank you so much. Uh, as we are all aware, student fees are a national issue, but the money students borrow for living costs goes into the local economy. So my question is, how would candidates ensure students get value for money from their experience of living in this region? Thank you. And first up to answer that question, can we please have Stuart Galton? Um, I'm a little bit flummoxed by the getting value for money element. Um, the student fees issue is one that, of course, that my party has been involved in for quite some time. Uh, and, of course, Tracy's party before then, because they introduced them. Um, but um, one of the things that we need to make sure is that they get value for money from the university in terms of the education that they're offering. I know it's been very challenging over covid uh, to uh, enable students to get the full student experience that they should have had over that period. Uh, outside of COVID, we need to make sure that universities are responding um, appropriately uh, and making sure that they uh, are creating those relationships with, for instance, um, landlords that are also housing the students that they're educating to ensure that they get a fair deal on accommodation as well. And that as, as far as possible, uh, there are good deals 
uh, outside of uh, the campus and uh, outside Thank of the housing you as well very much for there. students in the wider environment. Thank you. Thank you very much there, Stuart Goulton. And next up, can we please have Tracy Brebin? Uh, yeah, thank you, Victoria. Well, as you'll know that Labour is committed to reintroducing the maintenance grant and abolishing tuition fees. And we've been clear throughout this pandemic that students must not pay the price for the government's incompetent, chaotic response to the pandemic. So, you know, working with local authorities and universities to deliver good services across the board. And I know our universities in West Yorkshire did go the extra mile to keep that student experience going. And not everything is under the mayor's control. But what I would say is there should also be a real focus on those disadvantaged students getting support on maintenance um, grants from universities to make sure that access to a university education is open for all. Thank you very much for those remarks, Tracy. Next up, can we please have Bob Buxton? Thank you. So um, you said um, student tuition fees are a national issue. I said they're a national disgrace. Nine and a quarter grand, absolute disgrace. Labour introduced them at a thousand. Labour trebled them against the manifesto pledge to a, a, over three grand it was. And then the Tories and Liberal Democrats trebled them again to over nine grand, breaking a Lib Dem clear promise. The Yorkshire Party's against tuition fees. In Germany, they got rid of them one powerful devolved body at a time. The mayor doesn't have anything like that sort of power. And in Scotland, of course, you see a devolved body where they don't pay tuition fees. So in the short term, how do we get better value for money from universities? Well, how about having some teaching standards? I've been job interviews for jobs where it's research and a teaching job. I've been asked loads of questions about my research and never a single question about my ability to teach. They do not select those members of staff on the grounds of teaching. I'm afraid it is the university leads that I am talking about primarily here. So you need to select people on the grounds of ability to teach as well as research. You need to have proper safeguarding, which isn't done well enough at university level. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And next up, can we please have Andrew Cooper? So, so yes, uh, agree that tuition fees ought to end. Yes, the Green Party uh, agrees there ought to be uh, a maintenance grant. And um, I, I don't think we're going to go back on that. So, so that will be, uh, that, that's something that we're quite firmly committed to. Um, uh, what's in the power of the mayor? What can the mayor do? Um, well, I, I think one of the things that uh, we can do is, is have a role in regenerating our town and city centres. And so the, the students' experience of, uh, of being often there within town and city centres is going to be one where they want a quality of our own. So we're talking about uh, things like free Wi-Fi uh, within town centres. We're looking at things like free drinking water fountains so people don't have to go out and buying bottles of water when they're out and about. Uh, free outdoor gyms, uh, public art. We were talking to uh, the cultural sector earlier on, and I think having public art and, and uh, entertainment within town centres as part of the offer there means that uh, the quality of life for, for many people, particularly students within our town centres, will be better. Thank you very much, Andrew. And that is your minute up again, I'm afraid. Um, next up, can we please have Matthew Robinson? Well, it's a good question from Victoria. Um, so you've heard all of the parties say um, we're against tuition fees, but we have no power to do it. Well, what does the mayor actually have some power to do? Well, the mayor actually has powers to make sure that we develop a region where we have great business opportunities, where there's job opportunities and apprenticeships, where people can actually make a choice to stay in the region, where they can have a career, they can get a home, where they can raise a family and where they can grow old. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure more of our best and our brightest stay here. So it means making sure we've got the right sort of housing in the region. It means we've got making sure we've got our universities Stuart working next. with the business Stuart sector. Next. We're looking at startups and how so many students are starting up their own businesses. How can we encourage them to do more of that and work with them to deliver? And how can we make sure that we've got parks and open spaces that people want to stay and enjoy so that it is a full experience living in West Yorkshire and being in this region and wanting to stay in this region? And that comes through working with our universities and listening. And leadership's about listening. And that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that we have a region that's open for all. Thank you, Matthew Robinson. And I believe our last answer will be from Stuart Goulton. No. We've had Stuart, yeah. We've had Stuart. Um, <laughs> I think that's all the answers for that question then. I'm sorry, guys. Got a bit confused there. Thank you, guys. And thank you to all the candidates for answering those questions. And we will now move on to some questions by the audience. We have had quite a few, 
So if you can stick to the minute or even go below, that means we've got a little bit more time to go through a little bit more questions. But obviously your limit is a minute, so do as long as you want up to that minute. Thank you, everyone. So we'll go with the first question. And it is, Bradford is very proudly bidding for City of Culture 2025. What commitment would you make to Bradford 2025 and the role of culture in Bradford's recovery and regeneration? Just give you a few seconds to write that down. And then um, if we can have first answer from Bob Buxton, please. Yeah, thanks. Well, um, the arts are my, uh, my main uh, hobby. I've uh, written, directed, um, starred and edited my own uh, movie. And I was part of Leeds uh, Light Night, uh, seven years in a row, doing four hours non-stop unscripted um, street theatre. So what will I do in the role? Uh, the mayor gets 105 grand. I've already committed publicly to giving part of that to cultural events. So when Leeds, having Leeds 2023, I'll be funding um, satellite events around the rest of West Yorkshire to get more people involved. When it's Bradford's turn in 2025, I'll be doing the same for the other parts of West Yorkshire. Uh, cultural events are important. So I hope they um, help, to help to break down barriers between people and hopefully stop uh, discrimination. Thank you. And thank you for that. Bob Buxton. We will go with Stuart Galtonen, please, next. I'm fully behind Bradford 2025 in the same way that I'm behind Leeds 2023. And I'm also behind Thank all the other festivals the which are organised by uh, local authorities or their partners throughout West Yorkshire. We need these celebrations uh, of our identity uh, of, uh, as West Yorkshire citizens. Uh, and because it's good for us in our mental well-being, but it's also good for us economically. And the more that we can do to support organisations that are participating in that, the better. So the primary partner in this is going to be the local authorities, but the mayor uh, and, and my role in particular would be to encourage and enable those councils to go even further to support all those arts organisations taking part in those festivals. Thank you very much for that, Stuart. Next up, can we please have Tracy Braben? Thank you. Well, before I, became, I, I came into politics, I was in the creative industries for over three decades as an actor and a writer. So you won't be surprised to know that um, my pitch to be the mayor of West Yorkshire is very much focused on the a creative new deal and a creative recovery from the pandemic. Wellbeing is going to be absolutely central to that recovery and culture is an important part. Uh, Bradford uh, and all the team that are trying to deliver the Bradford 2025 and also uh, Leeds 2023, the Kirkley's Year of Music and so many other festivals will have my 100% support. But it's not just about supporting the organisations, it's making sure that communities are engaged and also we bring international investment and national investment to support them through business sponsorship and so on. I know it's going to be an exciting few years and I'm right behind you and I know we can really um, punch above our weight. Thank you very much, Tracy, for those comments. And next up, can we please have Andrew Cooper? So one of the things I would want to do is ensure that uh, Bradford 2025 had direct input into uh, the mayor's business plan. Uh, and so uh, that, that would mean that uh, each year uh, up to 2025, uh, they would come present uh, to uh, me as mayor to talk about the ideas, the things that they wanted to achieve, and crucially, how the mayor can actually get involved and how the mayor can help. Uh, and that would have budgetary implications because business plans do have budgetary implications. But, and I also think that it would be uh, a good idea if the mayor had input into the plans that for 2025 itself. And so it works both ways in that. So it's ex these, these things are always exciting. And one of the things I would like to see come out of it is a direct link to many of the communities around Bradford to broaden the appeal of it and to make it more relevant to people's everyday lives. Thank you for that, Andrew. And last on this question, can we please have Matthew Robinson? Thanks, Jana. I think it's a good question because we've seen Leeds 2023. It was proposed by the Conservatives on Leeds City Council. And I was pleased to 
vote for it. Um, and now Bradford 2025 and, and other celebrations and festivals coming forward. What the mayor needs to do is make sure that we have culture champions across our region who are feeding into all of the strategies, making sure that the mayor is hearing just what's working, but also what's not working, where we need to do more and where we need to step up. We need to make sure we have a, a culture forum so that the feedback loop is there and we're continually seeking to improve. It's about regenerating high streets too, so that culture forms part of our regeneration offer, where there are places people want to not just shop and work, but actually stay and play. It's about making sure we have uh, tourism and hospitality connected to this too. But ultimately, I want to make sure that the culture offer we have for a region has an impact on jobs and careers, that people see this as a career of choice and know that they can go into that career and are encouraged to go into that career. So that will be the legacy that we must seek to create. Thank you very much, Matthew. And with that, we will go to our next question. Are you pro-climate emergency or pro-airport expansion? <laughs> Both not possible. And should the mayor not be pressuring for HS2 to be completed to bring low carbon travel? Are we all good with that? Yeah. Lovely stuff. I'll give you a few seconds to write those down again. Right, thank you very much. I will go to Stuart Golton first, please. Thank you. I think I might be in danger of overrunning my minute. <laughs> um, I am against uh, Leeds Bradford expansion. I don't think we should be encouraging uh, an expansion in air travel when the air industry has not yet got to a point where it can actually deliver uh, aircraft which don't pollute uh, the atmosphere. In terms of HS2, um, it's wrong to call HS2 a low carbon option because uh, it, it won't recover the carbon that is expended to deliver it but for at least 50 years after it's been constructed. We need to have much better uh, standard uh, rail connectivity within the region and to concentrate moreover on Transpennine links, not the links to London. And we need to have that uh, station in Bradford before we see High Speed uh, 2 connecting us to London. Thank you very much, Stuart. Can I next invite Tracy Bremen, please? Thank you. Well, the climate emergency is real, and that's why I'm really proud that the Labour councils have committed to zero carbon emissions by 2038. What we don't have currently is that roadmap to delivery. Um, where do we need to be in five years' time? How do we get there? Now, the airport is a particularly, I know it's a contentious issue, and there will be a, a variety of opinions about this. I think having um, a new terminal, which is zero carbon emission terminal, is a good thing. It replaces the old leaky terminal. It makes sense. Um, what's really important is we understand that this sector is currently on its knees. Um, we don't know when we're going to get back to anything like even pre-COVID um, uh, flights because uh, we know that tech has absolutely delivered uh, great strides in not having to travel halfway around the world for a meeting. And uh, as we see now, even on this one, that we can do that on Zoom. What's really important is that the, the aviation sector also has uh, obligations on research and development, lighter planes, more economic fuel, but also it needs to listen to the people it serves. So that's very important that those campaigners who must feel like they've spent most of their life campaigning against the airport, that they are heard when it comes to noise pollution, when it comes to uh, road, uh, roads and um, their quality of life. It's, it's a national strategy, but as mayor, I am outward facing. I am wanting international students to come from all over the world to our universities. I want international business to invest in us. And part of that Thank offer you. is to have an airport. Thank you very much, Tracy, for that. Can we next please go to Andrew Cooper? So, yes, I'm against airport expansion because I believe in the climate emergency and um, the, the two are not at all compatible. Uh, on the same morning that uh, Conservative and Labour councillors uh, voted through uh, the, um, the, the new terminal, which is part of the expansion of Leeds Bradford Airport, uh, the French government uh, announced it was not going to expand Charles de Gaulle Airport uh, the very same day. Uh, and and I, was, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I thought, 
uh, you know, just across the channel, uh, we'd had somebody, uh, a government which had uh, given a very positive move, and we just simply didn't reciprocate. I was, I was disgusted. To be quite honest. So, um, yes, if you actually look at the amount of emissions that are coming out, this has been great research being done by the University of Leeds uh, about this. Uh, you can see that the amount of emissions from the expansion, as is already planned by Leeds Bradford International Airport, would completely blow our targets. And so either you get it or you don't get it. Uh, and, um, and if for some reason or other you, you are still championing the expansion of Leeds Bradford Airport, You've um, you, you've simply not understood the problem, uh, and um, uh, and that then basically your, your climate claims are simply lip service. Uh, so we do need to get real about this. Thank you very much for those comments. And next up, can we please have Matthew Robinson? Yeah, sure. Um, so. I do recognise the climate emergency and I, I do think there is far more that we need to do and I don't think that it's incompatible, as you heard Andrew said, to take a stance where the, you understand that the airport needs a new terminal, that it is an embarrassment as it stands at the moment, um, that building a new terminal actually gives us a zero carbon terminal. It means that we can have new jobs, we can have uh, investment and growth in the region um, and that we can connect public transport to the terminal and, and we need to be doing far more and we need to be pushing the airport and we need to be pushing the owners of the airport and the airlines to do more on climate change um, and innovation is coming and we are seeing that happen all the time. What will happen if we say no to the airport is that people will just trek to Heathrow and Manchester. They will, that will continue. Um, so what we need to do is make sure that we, make, we strive to make our airport even better and really, really push standards forward. The HS2 point, um, I, I'm in favour of HS2. I think it should be starting here in the north. Actually, it opens us up to deliver HS3, Northern Powerhouse Rail, adds capacity to the line. We need to make sure that there's more uh, apprenticeships that come through this, that we understand directly the impact on jobs uh, and building our universities. The University of Leeds and the University of Huddersfield have got great rail institutes who can do far more to make sure that our students and our unis are involved and there are career opportunities there. We can be at the heart of a transport revolution in the UK and West Yorkshire. We need to do more. Thank you very much, Matthew. And last last question, can we please get Bob Buxton? Thank you. I'm proud of the Yorkshire Party's East Riding councillors. Three times they tried to get a climate emergency declared in the East Riding. First two times blocked by the massive Tory majority. Third time, lucky, they got it through. Now, onto the airport. Do I support an increase in flights first thing in the morning, last thing at night with noisier aircraft? No, I don't. Do I support a new eco-friendly terminal? Yes, of course. Why on earth wouldn't you? It um, would mean you have a net zero for on-ground operations. What about the future of aviation? I've already mentioned um, biofuels. So in the US, uh, the US Department of Defense, they could with a blend which is 50% biofuel for a fighter jet and a reduction in the carbon footprint of that activity is 84%. Why aren't we doing that sort of research? And if I have control of the adult education budget, it's one of many things that I will look to work towards. Uh, we also need for the airport a direct rail link with a park and ride, not primarily for airport users actually, but to take a lot of traffic off a very busy road there, and to then link up perfectly to the future mass transit system. The, uh, uh, the one which has been posed by the City Council, it will be obsolete once you have the mass transit system, destroy a lot of green belts, and uh, in the recent consultation, people supported the Yorkshire Party's vision for that. A HS2, um, it isn't coming to Yorkshire, we know that. It's been separated in legislation from the Manchester route. That's so they could approve Manchester's route while leaving ours dormant. So they haven't officially cancelled it, it's not doing anything with it at all. So Yorkshire, I'm afraid, uh, we'll be further behind. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Bob. And thank you to all of you for answering that question. Next up, we have another question from our audience. What experience slash credentials do you have for leading a multi-million pound regional organisation? And again, I will leave you a few seconds to jot that down. And then first up with answering, can I please have Tracy Braben to answer that question? Thank you. That's a great question. And um, well, as five years as a member of parliament, I've, I've uh, challenged governments. I've uh, stood my ground and been a voice for West Yorkshire. So whilst um, the numbers that uh, the, when you're talking about uh, devolution and so on, the numbers do seem eye-wateringly big, what is pivotal and what's your choice when you go and vote is the direction of travel. 
Um, where are we heading? What life experiences that person had that will make sure that the recovery from COVID is fair and just and that that will be a strong voice standing up to government when necessary, but also working with government to get things done. So as the Shadow Early Years Minister for a couple of years, I developed policy. I've worked with West Yorkshire Police to bring investment to um, uh, investigate historic child sex exploitation. I worked with my local trust to make sure we got um, over a billion, a million and a half for renovation of our local hospitals. These negotiations are important, but you also need to be respected by the people who are negotiating with you. So I think as a powerful voice and as the first woman Metro Mayor, I think it's important we get a woman in the room to make um, those changes. Thank you very much for that, Tracy. Can I next please have Andrew. So to, to answer the question, uh, for five years, um, I was a cabinet member uh, responsible for housing and property at Kirklees Council. Uh, and uh, that meant I had a budget greater than the uh, mayor of West Yorkshire at the time at 38 million. Um, the, the budget for, for housing was, was, was much greater than that and uh, dealing with uh, both public, private sector and also the council's own, own estate. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, uh, the, the, the experience is, 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 definitely, is definitely there. And uh, it's, you know, if you look at a backbench MP, uh, they're responsible for their own office budget uh, staffing and and that's about it really. They're, they're not responsible for millions of pounds worth of, of funding and certainly not responsible for policy or delivering uh, policy to any any extent. And so you, you actually have actually more influence and more power uh, as uh, as a, as a councillor in some instances than, than MPs. Um, and uh, so in, in terms of my experience, I, I've been involved with um, I've been a representative of the EU Committee of the Regions, which has meant that I've been involved in the UN climate talks and I've been able to influence those directly and got more power for both local and central, uh, local and regional governments to have more say over action on climate change in terms of the, uh, no, the national plans uh, that um, we feed into from local government. So um, I, I've got, uh, though I'm a local councillor, and yes, I deal with, if you like, small issues like potholes and all the other things that councillors deal with. There's also a lot of big stuff there as well that I've been involved with as well. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. And next up, can I please invite Matthew Robinson? Thank you. Um, well, as a councillor for a decade, I've uh, covered the Shadow Resources budget, which is holding the council to account for hundreds of millions of pounds on where it's spent. Um, I've been a councillor for 10 years, so I've been used to answering my constituents, working with them, working with different community groups, and helping to make improvements for them. Uh, I've had a proper job as well. I've worked within the education sector and worked with education charities, schools, trusts, multi-academy trust councils and others to help deliver social mobility and improve people's life chances. Um, I've been a school governor, um, and I've helped secure funding from my area for ministers as well and with, for the government to help improve my community. Um, the short answer to this is that nobody is ever fully ready to take on a position like this because it is brand new. There is nobody who can credibly stand there and say that they've got all the skills. It will be about learning and adapting and making improvements, listening and taking advice from everybody across the region, including our businesses, our experts and others, so we improve the region. Anybody that's a closed mind and thinks that they're a done deal, I'm afraid not. Thank you very much for that, Matthew. Next up, can we please have Bob Buxton? Um, yes, I've made a stance to Tracy's point. I don't think you should choose how to vote on the grounds of gender, and I find that incredibly patronising and rude. Anyway, so I think it helps if the head of an organisation actually knows what they're talking about. There are powers on transport, on green energy, um, on adult education, which I have professional experience in. Um, I do have some experience on the Royal Parish Council and I uh, led the survey which proved the post um, airport road was a waste of money and that we should have a rail link instead. So I achieved from a very position, a very low power and you know, no real budget, something actually quite important, working with my fellow parish councillors, of course, and to give them credit as well. And uh, as I said before, if you vote for a politician, you'll get politics. If you vote for an engineer, you will get results. The powers that the mayor has are the powers that I, are the experience that I have professionally. So Matt is right, no one's, um, no one's completely ready, it's a brand new job. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Bob. And last of this question, can we please have Stuart Golton? Uh, well, to follow up that last comment, if you vote for, for a politician, you get you get politics, yes. If you vote for an engineer, you get cogs and wheels. Um, and one of the things that I can offer you is uh, the widest experience of all of the candidates here tonight. I've done 23 years in local government, uh, and for over a decade I've been on the Leeds City Council's executive board, which has made the strategic decisions on hundreds of millions of pounds for Leeds City Council. Uh, also, more importantly, I've been on the West Yorkshire Combined Authority as an opposition member for the past five years, and I've seen how bad decisions get made on that organisation, and I can go in at speed and make sure that they are improved for the benefit of West Yorkshire citizens from the get-go. And in terms of issues like Leeds Bradford Airport, I used to be the chair of the board of directors of Leeds Bradford Airport, so there's another big organisation that I was responsible for, but it gave me the insight to understand that actually the industry needs to change if we're going to take it forward and have it as a valuable asset for us in West Yorkshire, and we shouldn't be encouraging bad practice, we should be encouraging good practice. And that's the kind of difference I will bring as your West Yorkshire Mayor. Thank you to all the candidates for answering that question. And next we have, what are your plans for ensuring well-paying jobs and major institutions and companies are located here in West Yorkshire and that there are real opportunities for high powered, fulfilling careers in this region? not losing talent to other regions and indeed attracting talent from elsewhere. I'm going to go with the question again just because it's quite a long one so everyone can hear it properly. What are your plans for ensuring well-paying jobs and major institutions and companies are located here in West Yorkshire and that, the, and that there are real opportunities for high-powered, fulfilling careers in this region? not losing talent to other regions and indeed attracting talent from elsewhere. And again, we'll go for the 90 seconds on this question, so we've got a bit more time to answer it. And first to answer, please, Bob. Back Thank you. Um, firstly, to answer Stuart's point, cogs and wheels are quite useful if you want to get a mass transit system together. Um, so well-paying jobs. Well, first of all, you don't increase um, taxes you have a high tax environment, you're not going to attract big business. You do need to improve transport. It's one of the infrastructures that, that big businesses or any also business will need and look for. And then part of my answer here is about career-led adult education. So I've run a foundation degree in renewables. We need lots more green jobs in engineering, in health science, but also in lots of other professions as well, performing arts. We need career-led education. Too often people get great qualifications, but they haven't got anything on the CV and they can't then get a job. Very importantly, nobody will be too qualified to, to retrain in a different area. So you won't be stuck with perhaps qualification that isn't valuable. Nobody will have too few qualifications to start. I've taught people from very unfortunate backgrounds, people who have failed in education first time around, and I've got them to great engineering courses. In fact, one of our students from 10 years ago bumped into it on the street yesterday. You know, he's now qualified in, in mechatronics, had a good career in that. So I know what I'm doing with these things, and education is the key. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Next up, can we have Andrew Cooper, please? So the things which are actually going to keep um, keep within the region uh, skills and jobs are things that we're going to have to spend money on over a long period of time. And the the, the battle against climate change um, uh, under is about is a seventeen year program to achieve a, a zero carbon economy under current plans. So I'd like to accelerate. So basically nearly a generation and probably more is, is going to be required to do that. So one of the policies I put forward is the Green Building Fund. Now the Green Building Fund uh, will ensure that all new build uh, properties are built to the passive house standard or equivalent. Uh, and that's a very high quality of building which reduces the amount of carbon uh, that, that's produced by that building. Now that will mean training for architects, it will mean training for builders, it will mean that supplies coming into the region to, to, to deliver that, the sort of window um, settings, the sort of heating systems, we'll, we'll need to do that. And so by developing that, by getting that in place, uh, we will uh, build a, um, over a period of years, specialisms which will, uh, within the area, which then can be kept within the area, but also export those skills to other places when we've got enough of those people uh, trained up. 
So it's quite exciting stuff. And, and of course, with the training and skills agenda that we have means that air source heat pumps, which are going to be replacing gas boilers, we're going to need training for that. Uh, and so the, the mayor's role will be to, to address uh, those shortages in skills and to uh, ensure that to smaller, smaller companies uh, have got an opportunity to deal with that. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. Uh, next up, can we please have Matthew Robertson? Yeah. So it's a, a great question because actually we need to make sure we're doing both. We need to make sure we're attracting talent who are the, you know, high paid, best and brightest, but we actually need to be making sure that the businesses that come here and there's a, a resilient workforce to attract them. And that means talent at all levels and all education. So what I want to do is make sure we have new opportunity areas here in the region where we're working with our universities, our businesses, our colleges, our schools, helping to develop our best and our brightest, make sure that we are leading on adult education. I want to make sure that we've, we've already seen government departments are moving here. We need to do more of that. They're moving because they know the decision makers are going to be based here and we can attract talent here. It means working with our universities, our startups um, and, and making sure that they have the opportunity to thrive. Who would have thought 20 years ago that Facebook would be as big as it is. You need to make sure that you generate startups here. You need to make sure that you're giving everybody the chance to succeed. I've also said we'll have a mayor's business board. The reason for that is I want to hear just from business what the challenges are, but where the growth industries are, who we should be attracting, who in their supply chain we need to be making sure we're working with and bringing them to the region. And I've already had conversations with ministers about working with the Department for International Trade, how we can make sure we market West Yorkshire on a global scale bringing investment from abroad. We also need to make sure we generate houses here in the region. That doesn't mean building on our green belt. When Labour say they've got concrete plans, they mean it. They want to concrete over the green belt. Now, we won't do that by uh, make our region a popular place to visit if we completely change it. We need to make sure that what we do is regenerate brownfield sites first. Thank you, Matthew, for those remarks. Next up, we have Stuart Galton, please. Uh, thanks, Joanna. Um, well, if we think about where people get attracted to most in this country, uh, a lot of people get attracted down to London uh, when, when they've graduated in particular. And, and I talk to people who are in London, I say, well, why are you there? And they say, oh, it's amazing. There's all this culture. And you say, well, when was the last time you went to the theatre? And then they say, oh, I can't afford to because I'm spending so much on my housing. And the thing is, our uh, area is so much more attractive in terms of your access to the countryside, in terms of the affordability of our housing. Uh, and it's another of the reasons why we need to make sure that we invest in our cultural offer so that it becomes even more attractive in comparison to the likes of London. But more importantly, we need to have the connectivity that there is in London as well, so that the talent that is here can actually move around more effectively to the jobs which are available. And that we make sure that those jobs are accessible to people in every part of West Yorkshire. And that's why the mass transit system is very important. But more importantly, that, that other connectivity in terms of having bus services that aren't just hub and spoke in and out of Leeds city centre, but actually move around our region much more effectively are very important as well. And we need to make sure that our universities are working together uh, to uh, identify opportunities with local firms so that they can grow uh, the good, well-paid jobs of the future. And that the graduates that are here, because the, we don't need to attract so much from outside, because there's a huge amount of talent here, and we're such a young population as well, especially in places like Bradford. We need to make sure that we're keeping that talent here in West Yorkshire. Thank you, Stuart. And last and last question, please, Tracy Braven. I think it's a, a really powerful question because we haven't been punching as high as we can. Uh, our research and development is below the national standard. Productivity is not as good as it could be. But I think the West Yorkshire Mayor, I think this is a great a chance for us to switch that dial. We've got all these clever young people coming into our communities. Uh, supported by universities, but then where are the jobs for them? I, I was uh, campaigning hard to um, ensure Channel 4 came to Leeds. I was really pleased that that happened. That's part of the role of the mayor is to be a champion for the region. But it's also when you bring those businesses, you have to say, yes, we have the skilled workforce. So whether that's um, young people who can work at Optair to build the green buses, or whether there's scientists working in hydrogen uh, with the 
the green agenda. Um, I'll be working with, um, with colleagues in Manchester and Sheffield to make sure we have this uh, innovation corridor between the cities and communities and mayoral regions so that we can support each other to make sure that we can be loud and proud about Yorkshire and the North uh, being a great venue for your business uh, where you will get the skilled workforce. Connectivity is really important, of course. The cultural offer is vital. You're more likely to choose somewhere to live that has a good cultural offer over and above good schools, um, which I think is really why uh, the Creative New Deal is also important Thank and you. the Digital Academy to make sure we've got the workforce of the future. Thank you, Tracy, for that. And now we go on to our last question before your closing remarks. This one will have 30 seconds, quick fire question. Just give us your thoughts. How would you like people to assess whether you have been successful at the end of your first term? What will success look like? And we will go first to Andrew Cooper, please. So the first term is three years. Uh, and so uh, by, by three years, I'd want uh, the plan to achieve a zero carbon economy by 2038 and actually 2030, if possibly if we can stretch that, to, to be in place, but also uh, be underway. Uh, and this to be actually seeing carbon reductions uh, coming into place that are on track with our plans. If, if that's happening, then we could be uh, an innovator for the rest of the country and show the way for the rest of the country to, to address that. So that would be the thing that I would want, want to achieve. If we could do it, it would be amazing. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. Uh, next up, can we have Matthew Robinson, please? Yeah. Uh, great question, this, because three years might not feel like a long time, but actually what I want to make sure is that we've got more police, we've got the justice reports in place, that we have our road safety plans for each and every ward across the region that there won't be no new there will be no new local taxes uh, across our region that we will have made progress on the northern forest and sites coming forward so that people can we can create new habitats but people can see the impact that we're having and that what we're doing is seeking to deliver on climate change that we've got demand led transport in place and that the business board is working and we are bringing investment into this region thank you very much matthew and next up can we please have stuart golton Um, well, ultimately, uh, the best measure of success is re-election. And, and I hope that that will be based on the fact that we have got clarity about what our rail investment plan for West Yorkshire is that we're going to get off the government and that it's a good, fair plan and that I fought hard to get. Also, that we will be well on our way to getting buses coming under the control of the West Yorkshire Mayor so that we can make sure that bus services are going to be far more uh, fairly delivered in terms of getting affordability for the passenger, not just profits for bus companies. And then latterly, I want to ensure that every high street has had the access... Thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much. And next up, can we please have Tracy Braben? Um, yes, well, my big priority, given we've got a COVID pandemic, our businesses in many sectors are struggling to recover. We have far too many young people, in particular in Black, Asian, minority ethnic um, youngsters, unemployed. So my one, you asked for one, my one um, uh, target will be to reduce unemployment across our region. It isn't right, it's unfair and um, uh, cruel that Thank our talented youngsters aren't in work. Thank you very much, Tracy. And last on the questions, Bob Buxton, please. Thank you. So safer streets, first of all, greener homes on rejuvenated derelict sites with supporting infrastructure, adult education courses, creating new opportunities for everybody, including a lot of green jobs, Mass improvements between existing transport, building towards a bus franchise model. And the mass transit system, of course, that won't get built in three years, but you're well en route with that, securing funding, consulting with people and getting the plans right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Bob. And now with all the questions having been answered, thank you very much to all the candidates for giving us their time. We will go to your closing mayor statements, which will be one minute, please. We will start off with Tracy Braben, please. Thank you so much for hosting this. It was a really interesting event. 
Um, it's going to be an important election, this. We have seen, haven't we, over the last um, 48 hours, the direction of travel of this government. And I think we need somebody in our region that is not going to just agree with government, but work with government where uh, we have, you know, uh, the same uh, desires to, you know, make our communities better, but also to be able to challenge and to be a strong voice. And we saw that, didn't we, um, uh, during the pandemic with Andy Burnham in Manchester, being someone who will be the voice and the champion for our region. And uh, certainly as a, a woman who grew up on a council estate in Batley, a free school meal kid, um, I've had all the opportunities offered to me by Labour governments, and I want to make sure that all young people across our region have those same opportunities to flourish. I want West Yorkshire to be the best place to live and work and start a business, have a family and to grow old. It's really important. Do vote May the 6th. Thank you very much, Tracy. And uh, next up for closing statements, please, Bob Buxton. Thank you. So every registered voter will receive the booklet for this election. I ask people to read that booklet, read all seven candidates, what they have to say. Read the websites, read the press releases. Who speaks with substance? Who puts forward solutions? Who has the CV to sort out adult education, transport, green energy, and lots more besides? Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob Buxton. Next up for closing statements, please, Andrew Cooper. So I think with the, uh, the Mayor of West Yorkshire, we need something new. Uh, a Labour Mayor talking to Labour Council leaders uh, is nothing new. Um, a Conservative Mayor talking, uh, doing the bidding of uh, the Conservative Government uh, it doesn't exactly fill me with uh, a lot of inspiration. But, and tackling the climate emergency is really important because we're actually talking about the choices that we make. Uh, the choices we make are really important. If we elect somebody who, who basically is going to blow our climate targets due to the fact that they support airport expansion, we're in trouble. And those those choices are, are, are it's that it's that important. Getting this wrong is not something that we can we can stomach. So I, I would uh, I would suggest that um, <laughs> vote for me as your first preference. Uh, I, I would say that, and I will. Uh, my record has shown that I'm I'm used to innovating and bringing new ideas which actually bring positive results uh, and do tackle our climate crisis. So vote for me. Thank you very much, Andrew Cooper. And next up, we have Matthew Robinson, please. Well, thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening and thank you for all the great questions. Uh, I don't think this is the end of the mayoral journey for the 6th of May. I think the mayor needs to keep doing this and make sure they are keep going out across to communities across West Yorkshire and listening to people and striving to make sure we improve our region. We've got a unique opportunity to work with the government, with councils, with agencies and other partners to deliver. And if you believe in levelling up, as I do, then it means levelling up our whole region. It can't just be about city centres, it can't just be about certain sectors. We must all see and feel the benefits of devolution. And that's what I'm keen to deliver, and that's what I will deliver as Mayor. I want to make sure that we have a region that we can be proud of, a region that you succeed in, a region that you stay in, grow up, grow old in, and a region that we can all be passionate about. We will all be ambassadors for West Yorkshire, and I want to take you all with me on that journey. Thank you very much, Matthew. And last on the closing statements, please can I Stuart Galton. Uh, thanks, Joanna. Uh, one thing that you don't want for your West Yorkshire mayor is an apologist for a Tory government or, or an apologist for Labour failure in town halls in West Yorkshire. You need an independent voice that can actually take the climate change seriously and be loud about getting a fair deal for our transport infrastructure. Uh, there is a real opportunity as well because the voting system for the mayor is different. You have two votes. You have a first and a second preference. It's different to first past the post where often you're voting for, for the one that you dislike the least. On this one, you can really vote for what you believe in for your first preference. And then your second preference is more of an insurance vote as well. So please vote with your heart after what you've heard today. Thank you. Thank you very much to all the candidates. And just before we go, I would like to invite Professor Shirley Congdon for some final words. Thanks, thanks Joanna. 
So I really just want to say a big thank you to our students for organising these hostings. I'm sure all of the candidates will appreciate that our students care. They care about what matters to them. We've talked a lot about these things that matter to them tonight. You can tell through the questions, the environment, student fees, living costs, transport. They are really passionate and these students that we have in West Yorkshire are our future. So I just really want to give them a really big, big thank you for organising this and finally to thank all of the candidates for spending their valuable time with us this evening. So thank you and I hope you've enjoyed the hustings. Good night. And also again, thank you from me to all the candidates for giving us their valuable time and answering all of our questions and helping us out. And thank you to the whole audience for tuning in and thank you everyone.